Hey everybody, it's Tyler Tapper, and guess who got a new lathe for Christmas? That's right, it's me. So that means you guys are going to get to watch along as I ham-fistedly learn how to use this thing. If you guys have any tips or tricks, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. I'll try to point out all my mistakes for any other beginner uh, wood turners out there, and we can kind of learn together. This is probably about the maybe fifth piece I turned. Just did some spindles before, and as you can see, it kept catching there. The issue was that it wasn't quite tight enough between the two ends. So I really like the lathe so far. The one issue I have had with it is it came with the nut a little bit stripped on the tail stock on the bottom of there. So when you pull the lever to tighten it down, it doesn't get a whole lot of pressure on there. So I need to replace that, um, but it's a little bit hard to get enough, get enough tightness on there to keep it from catching like that. So the what I'm using here is just an off cut that I cut up from some down branches in my backyard that's been sitting out in the wood pile for quite a while. So it has a lot of the gray color in there is spalting. That's a fungus that comes in and grows into the wood. And it gave it some kind of cool character. This particular piece had a crack through the middle. I didn't really know what I was going to do with it until I started getting in there now. You can see me kind of chasing that crack down into the middle there. Uh, I figured it'd make kind of a cool mushroom, so I started going that direction with it chisel I used in the beginning was a bowl gouge. I used that to remove the majority of the wood and then I switched to the skew to get in some of the details in there where the bowl gouge wouldn't fit. After that I'm coming in here with a scraper just to try and get the surface finish a little bit better and the parts that I can access with it. Since I don't have my technique perfected with the chisels I came back in with some sandpaper to get the surface finish good before I went on to my finish. I went through 80 grit, 120, and 220 to get it uh, relatively smooth before I started applying it. So watching other people do wood turning, one of the things I always thought was pretty cool was how you could use super glue to get a really nice shiny finish on wood. Uh, it seems to penetrate into it really well and give you something that you can buff out. So I'm using medium viscosity, not sure if that's the best, but that's what I had on hand. Rubbing it in just with a piece of paper towel, and then I'm going to let it dry so I can sand it and buff it out. Played around a little bit with the grits. Um, I figure since I stopped at about 220, I would start up on the super glue at 320. And I use this Fiend Wax. It's a beeswax and orange oil. I use this basically as a lubricant to keep the paper from clogging up. I went real light on the 320 just to knock down the ridges, and then I moved up through the grits to get it polished. Turns out that sandpaper gets a little bit uh, slippery when you get all that oil all over it. So I went from the 320 to the 500 to the 800 to the 1000, and I've done 1200 on some, but I don't see a whole lot of difference. After the sanding was done, to give it a little bit of a buff, I went in there with some toilet paper. I didn't want to scratch it with paper towels. Uh, I was really impressed with the finish that came out of that. I've never seen pine or seen a softwood really do the tiger's eye effect like this did after that. So flipping the camera around while it was still on the lathe so you could see the contrast between the, the white wood of the pine and the part that was spalted that the fungus had gotten into. Really kind of a cool look. So after the finish was totally buffed out, it was time to take it off of the lathe. When I take it off, you can look at the bottom and you can see where that, uh, where that part was spinning in the base of it. Took it over to the sander to get rid of the little nub on the bottom. At first I was going to do a concave sanding in the bottom, then I decided just to make it, make it flat so it would sit a little bit better on the table or wherever I was putting it. At this point I didn't really know what I was making it into, but I figured why not stick a candle in the top of it. Rounded top obviously didn't work too well in there, so I had to use a Forstner bit to create a cavity in there. It's kind of, usually it would be kind of a problem doing that on a dome, but because the tail stock had pushed that uh, center into there, it gave me a reference of exactly where to drill it in there, and it kept the Forstner bit uh, right on the right path because it already had that start for it. It's like a pilot hole for it built in. I wasn't super concerned about the finish on the inside where the candle went in because I figured it'd be covered most of the time, but I didn't want it to just be raw wood. So I went in there and I did a layer of super glue on there, wiped it in, and then I came back in with a sanding roll, just did a little bit of sanding on the drill press, and then put another layer of super glue on there to make it relatively smooth.
So I think it's been really cool to play with this lathe since I've gotten it. I'm definitely no expert, but being able to take just wood out of the yard, things that you wouldn't think you'd be able to make anything out of, and especially this piece, which was an offcut from another spindle I did that I didn't think I'd be able to use because of the crack in it. Um, it's really, really cool to be able to see it turn into something and something I think turned out pretty well. I wanted to thank you for taking the time out to watch this video. I really do appreciate it. Uh, if you liked it, click that like button. I think I'll be doing some more of these lathe videos just because I've been having so much fun playing with it. If you know anybody that you think would like the video, please share it around. That really helps me out, and I will see you guys next time. Hey everybody, I want to let you know that I'm starting up a Patreon campaign. Uh, if you guys are feeling generous, I'd love it if you'd check down the description. There's a link down in there to my Patreon page where you can donate. Otherwise, I really appreciate your continued support just by watching the videos. Thank you.